In this video, let's take a look at the various sign off checks in physical design. So, as we know, the physical design flow starts from the RTL or gate level synthesized netlist, which is usually provided to us by the front end team. And then we go through the physical implementation flow, which basically involves a variety of steps, which we discussed in one of the previous videos, like floor plan, placement clock resynthesis, routing, etc. And then finally, we get the layout, which is manufacturing ready. But before we can tape out our design or send it for manufacturing, we have to go through a number of critical validation checks. We need these checks because we care about these three things here. The first is functionality, which means that we want our chip to function as intended after it is manufactured. Also, we want it to run at the frequency we intended it to run at. The next is manufacturability, which means that we do not want any issues while our design is being manufactured. So there could be small elements in our design which can cause an issue during fabrication. So to these sign off checks, we have to make sure that our layout does not have any such risky elements. And the third is reliability, which basically means that over the lifetime of the product or the chip, we won't see any premature fails. And so we have a bunch of sign off checks so that we are good with respect to these three criteria. So let's take a look at the sign off checks now. First is the STA or static timing analysis. So this category involves timing related checks. For example, we need to make sure that our setup timing is not violating on any timing path in our design. Otherwise, the chip can have functional failures or in other words, it will fail to function at the intended frequency. The next is the hold violations. Again, we need to make sure that none of the timing paths in our design have any hold violations. Otherwise, we will have functional failures. The clock min pulse width checks ensure that as the clock pulses or clock signals propagate through our design, then they don't become too narrow or get degraded. Having max trans violations in the design mean that we might be burning some unnecessary short circuit power or our cell delays might be negatively impacted and cause timing issues. And the same holds true for max cap violations. So all these five checks are a critical checks from STA or static timing analysis point of view. The next category is the noise or crosstalk. So the first one is the crosstalk delay. Crosstalk delay basically means that a signal switching on a wire can get slowed down like this or can get sped up like this due to a switching signal on a neighboring wire. So this can cause setup violation or transition violation by slowing down the signal like this or it can cause hold violation by speeding up the signal like this. The next is the bump or crosstalk noise violation. It means that any signal switching on a neighboring net can cause a bump on a static signal nearby which can cause a zero to be misinterpreted as a one and that can cause logic failures in the design. So any bump violations need to be fixed as well. So the next category is the PV or physical verification checks. The first is antenna violations. Having antenna violations in the design means that during manufacturing, the gates of the devices in our design can get damaged. So antenna violations happen when the metal area which is connected to a gate divided by the gate area, it exceeds a certain threshold. So we need to fix all these violations. Next is DRC violations or design rule checks. Having DRC violations in your design means that you have certain shapes in the design which cannot be manufactured by the foundry. So we need to fix all those DRCs, for example, metal spacing, via enclosure, metal area, etc. The next is LVS or layout versus schematic. So this check is basically checking for any differences between your schematic or layout. For example, if you have any opens or shorts or if you accidentally introduced any 
changes in your layout with respect to the schematic for example while doing any manual changes then such violations will be caught by LVS. The next category of sign off checks is the IR drop. Through IR analysis we want to ensure that all the standard cells in the design are getting the desired voltage from the power grid. If we have more voltage drop through the power grid before the power reaches the power pin of the standard cells then the standard cells will be operating at a lower voltage. For example instead of 1 volt they will be operating at 0 0.095 volts and operating at a lower voltage than expected means that they will be slower. So it can lead to timing issues in your design. The next category is the EM or electro migration checks. EM is basically a reliability issue where over a period of time due to the displacement of the atoms in the wires or routes opens and shorts can get created over a certain period of time. So we need to make sure that we don't have any EM violations in our design. EM violations are related to the current density. So we need to make sure that all the routes or wires in our design are adhering to the current density limits. The next check is the formal equivalence or logical equivalence check. Through this check we are ensuring that the functionality of our design in our final netlist is the same as the functionality which was originally coded in the RTL. This check will basically catch if we accidentally introduced any logical or functional changes in our design while doing the physical implementation. The last set of checks are the low power checks which are basically ensuring that all the low power strategies which are defined in the UPF are implemented as expected in your design. So just like formal equivalence is ensuring that our design functionality is the same as the RTL, the low power checks are ensuring that whatever power intent was defined in the UPF is implemented in our design. In future videos, we will discuss each of these sign off checks in much more detail but hope that this video helps in getting a very high level picture of what all sign off checks are needed in order to tape out a design.